This is Nicole Morgan from Roseland News. I am here with Gary Shaw, the superintendent of the Roseland DPW. It is our first snowstorm of 2017. Gary, tell me, who decides if the roads need to be salted or plowed? For the most part, it will be the Roseland Police Department, but on occasion, when the DPW is here and standing by for any particular storm, we decide and we go out immediately upon the snowfall. When is that decision made to start plowing, and who in the police department makes that decision? In the police department, it would normally be the shift uh, commander uh, who gets reported to by the patrol officers in the field. And once we've been out salting and the, pl and the salt, uh, snow begins to accumulate, they will call in for plows, and the DPW would then respond. When does the DPW start to prepare for a storm? Well, it begins in the fall of each year. And what we do is initially we order salt to make sure we have adequate supply of salt on hand. We then replace all of the blades on the base of the plows, as you can see out here. It's a cutting blade, they refer to it, and we put in new ones where needed. Then we make sure that the hydraulics are operating and that we're ready for any snowstorm that should come up with all eight vehicles plus the loaders. So um, in advance of any given storm, we would load the salters, as you might see in the background here behind us. That's an example of one. And we stage them and they're ready to go out as soon as the, the drivers arrive. Where does the salt come from? Well, in our case, it's uh, purchased through the Essex County Co-op. And this year, it's from Morton, the same people that make your table salt. But on occasion, we have had salt companies such as International Salt, Atlantic Salt, uh, Cargill Salt. It depends on who wins the contract. But it's all staged at Newark, at the port, and it is, it is brought up here by tractor tra uh, sometimes tractor trailers, sometimes tandem dump trucks, and deposited in our salt bin. We then load it with the loaders and load each and individual truck that we have. How long does it take to plow the entire town? It depends upon the, the amount of the snowfall and when we get out there to the plow. But typically it's about two and a half to three hours per, per round. And then of course at the end of the storm, we plow what's known as curb to curb, which can take about three and a half hours per pass. And how much does it cost to keep the road safe? Well, initially when we do the salting, it runs about $2,600 of salt per storm. Thereafter, you have some labor, manpower, and wear and tear on the trucks. But that's not uh, very high on a mild storm of, say, 8 inches. If you get into storms that, that run 18 inches to 2 feet, it could be substantial, approaching $8,000. Has there ever been a situation where you didn't have enough salt for the entire town? Yes, there have been times. Uh, especially in 2014, there was a shortage of salt. And uh, nobody in the area could get salt. So it was very difficult, and we had to get by with little bits of dribs and grabs where we could possibly get it from. We did never had we never had a full salt bin in 2014, as we do today. How much manpower does Roseland DPW have in order to handle a storm of this size? Uh, we could probably do it with eight, but we will be bringing in 11, 11 people for this particular storm because the actual total uh, inches of snow received is unknown at this time. What happens if there's an emergency and the roads aren't plowed? What would you do then? Well, we actually have two people remaining in the building for uh, mechanics work. So I have my mechanic and myself. And we would take a truck and lead the fire engine or the first aid squad through the streets with the plow down and get them to their destination. In your opinion, do you believe that is enough manpower? For most storms, we seem to, have, seem to have an adequate staff. However, there have been storms in the past where we seem to have fallen short with manpower. Does the town have enough plows to do the job? Yes, at the moment we do have uh, the uh, seven pickups. We also have three large uh, salters with plows, and I do have two loaders. So between that, that array of equipment, we do seem to handle any storm that comes our way. We are getting two new vehicles this year, and it will re one will replace this 1997 GMC pickup behind you, which is one of our favorite trucks, and we hate to part with it. But we will be getting two new vehicles this year with plows. Where does Roseland Public Works get weather updates prior to storms? Well, we actually get them through our Office of Emergency Management, and uh, we, we uh, are very well supplied by our emergency uh, coordinator, 
John Mathias, and he will give us updates three times a day, the day of a storm prior to a storm. He actually, for this storm, started giving me updates as early as Monday. And now, how accurate are the weather predictions? Well, um, that is the reasons for the updates. Um, you know, obviously, when it's uh, that far in advance, they're not as uh, precise. But as you get closer to the storm, and he starts to give me reports three times a day, they are more and more accurate. However, we have been fooled in the past, and a storm has blown completely by with only an inch of snow, and it was predicted to be 8 to 10. And when do you decide whether to salt or plow the road? Well, it depends upon the storm, obviously, but um, we, do, we typically do salt in advance uh, of most storms because that keeps the snow from adhering to the roadway and becoming harder to plow later on. So if the snow does happen to accumulate, however, to two and a half, three inches, we do go out and plow. So you don't automatically start plowing, you salt first? In, in some cases, and when the timing of the storm is right, and there's no cars on the road, and it's early, early in the morning, such as 2 a.m., 3 a.m., we will sometimes skip salting, not to waste the salt. Immediately plow, get the roads plowed by 7 a.m., and then salt. With respect to plowing, what special skills must the plow operator possess? Well, when, you, when it comes to snow plowing, uh, sometimes vision is very poor with uh, the snow falling while you're plowing. Tolerances and clearances are critical. They have to know where that plow is at all times. They have to have good judgment and they have to come very close to, to hardened objects, fixed objects, cars, sometimes curving, and, and other improvements that are there that are permanent. So if you don't want to take out curving cars or any of those objects, so they have to have very good judgment. And of course, they would need to um, be very aware of pedestrians in the roadway, etc. Are different vehicles used for different sections of the town? Yes, in, in a lot of cases we have narrow roads and we have wider roads of 30 feet wide. Some are as narrow as 14 feet. So we do have different sized plows and different sized trucks for those specific areas. And the smaller trucks are also there used for clearing up intersections and cul-de-sacs. And do you have any safety recommendations for residents who are outside shoveling when the plows come down the street? We would ask all residents that are outside, be it in their driveway or on the sidewalk, shoveling or snow blowing, to please get back from the road 10 feet. Because on occasion, the snow can fly about 10 feet. And I know residents do get upset because they just shoveled their sidewalk. And here we come and we put snow right back on their walkway. Please do not shovel your walks until we make our final pass and the road is plowed curb to curb. And do you have any safety recommendations for residents who might be shoveling outside when the plows come down? Well, we do ask that anyone shoveling the driveway or sidewalk uh, and sees a truck coming down with the plow down to please step back at least 10 feet from the roadway. And how would these residents know when the last pass is? Well, we do something called plowing curb to curb. So after a storm ends, we often go back out and we finish plowing so that that snow is no, no closer than six feet, no further than six feet from the curb. When they see that that snow is almost right up against that curb, we won't be back. Thank you, Gary, for your time. This is Nicole Morgan from Roseland News. I hope you all stay safe during this blizzard and back to you in the studio.